Hello everyone. Um, today I'd like to talk about normal distribution. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of you um, heard about this distribution before, which is also known as bell-shaped curve or Gaussian distribution. So many naturally occurring measurements of random variables, such as height, weight, um, intracular pressure, or even the errors of all these measurements are actually known to follow normal distribution. And this is considered one of the most important distributions in statistics uh, because it is the base distribution from which other statistical distributions are derived. So before we talk about the uh, normal distribution in more detail, uh, let's step back to the visualization of data and talk a little bit more about the histogram. So here, the histogram is uh, made by Jamovi and the data are based on Albert Michelson's measurement um, in 1879 on the speed of light in air. So due to this work, especially what's known as michelson morrill experiment, he became the first American Nobel Prize laureate in a science. By the way, this is the same Michelson from the visual neuroscience where you learned about Michelson contrast. Anyhow, um, when we look at a histogram like this, we can have a pretty good idea about you know, how the data are distributed by paying attention to the following. So first, you want to look at, um, you, know, you want to find out where the center of the data is. So we can find out the location of the center by finding out the region where the highest bars come together most frequently. So for this graph, uh, the center is about here. Looks like, oops. Um, right between these two values to um, 99.8 and to 99.9. Right, so which is probably the um, you know, average speed of light um, somewhere in between. And secondly, we can have a rough idea about how much spread there is about the center, which is typically summarized by a standard deviation. So to give you an idea of how the spread affects the shape of the histogram, here are two hypothetical data sets where they have the same mean about 50. Um, here, so 50, 50, so this is about the center of the uh, two distributions. Um, but they have different standard deviations. Um, as is obvious, the left one has larger standard deviation, right? The spread around the center is large, whereas about the same location, it's smaller, right? So, um, you know, this is a fact of uh, kind of different standard deviations on the histogram, right? Given the same mean, um, if the distribution have larger standard deviation, then the overall shape of the distribution looks kind of fatter, right? Compared to the distribution um, with the smaller standard deviation. Now, back to the histogram, we can also find out um, if the distribution is more or less symmetric about the center or skewed to the left or to the right. So in relation to this, you can also find out about the presence of outliers, which we'll have a chance to talk more about it. But for this distribution, it doesn't look like there is a serious violation in symmetry or obvious outliers. And finally, uh, we can figure out whether or not there are multiple modes in the data by looking at the number of peaks, which does not look like in this case either. So the mode of the distribution is easy to locate from a histogram. So to find the mode from a histogram, you just need to find the highest point in the histogram. Well, it is not so simple as that, mathematically speaking, but visually, that is uh, where you find the mode. And depending upon the number of peaks, a distribution can be bimodal, like in the graph on the left. See, see that there are two obvious peaks in that distribution. And if 
the distribution has more than two peaks as shown here right so it has three uh, modes uh, looks like and then we call this distribution multi-modal distribution so here is the summary of the things you look out for in a histogram so when you um, look at a histogram, you need to find the a center where the center is, and you know how much spread there is, and you look out for if the symmetry is okay, um, and at the same time uh, you want to look at if there's a uh, outlier or the outliers uh, exist in the data set. And also you want to take a look at, you know, if there are multiple peaks in a histogram. So let's imagine that um, we have millions of data to plot a histogram. And even though there's no right or wrong answers in terms of what the optimal number of bins or width of a bin should be, as I said before, but in general, if you have large data set, then it's better to divide the entire range into smaller bins. So for example, here we have a histogram of data with 11 bins of some exam scores. Say that we have like thousands and millions of data set. So now let's increase the number of bins to 100 to see how it looks. And we do this because we can and the data set is large. So now if we increase the number of bins, naturally the width of bin will decrease, right? And as the width of bin decreases, then the histogram looks smoother. See? So um, if we keep dividing the range smaller and smaller, then it will look smoother and smoother to the point where the outline of the histogram forms a smooth, continuous curve. Uh, when the bin size approaches to zero. And when the curve has the uh, following features, then we call the distribution a normal distribution. So um, this is a typical shape of normal distribution. And by the way, you should not uh, use the word normal in normal distribution like in everyday sense. So when a distribution is not normal, then it is not an abnormal distribution. I sometimes, you know, see or hear people say uh, the abnormal distribution, which, uh, uh, you know, to mean the opposite of uh, the normal distribution. Well, it is not, you know, exactly the opposite anyway, right? So you should not use the word abnormal. Okay, never ever say that in the context of statistics to refer a data set or distribution that is not normally distributed. Okay, I said this. Now, if a distribution is not normal, then it is just a non normal distribution, or it is some other uh, distribution with a different name. All right, so when descri uh, describing a normal distribution, uh, data scores, you know, values go to the x-axis and the probability, occurrence, frequency, density, sometimes uh, they say this is a density, go to the y-axis. So as you can see um, from this curve, uh, normal distribution is denser in the center and gradually thinning out to both tail ends from the center, hence the name bell curve. And please note that those two tails never touch uh, the x-axis and they stretch, stretch out to infinity in both directions. And from the mathematical point of view, the normal distribution curve is describing how likely you will see a certain value in a data set. So for example, um, so if you have um, a data located on the x-axis here, then the likelihood 
uh, that you will see this data under this normal distribution is found on the uh, the normal distribution curve, right? So the height of this um, data set um, to the normal curve determines the likelihood or the probability that you will see the data, right? So if you move to say like here, the center, then the likelihood that you will see this data is actually this much. Okay. And then this is basically the most likely observations uh, you can see under this normal distribution. So because the normal distribution is a symmetry around the center, and that is another feature of normal distribution. So whatever score in the middle is the most likely observations you can have in a data set, assuming your data follow normal distribution, which will be the mean. So what that means is that um, you know, the more typical um, or mediocre values, such as average, um, it, are concentrated in the middle under a normal distribution. Right? So, um, you know, these values are more likely to be observed in a data set. On the other hand, if you just go out to the uh, tail, then that's where you can find more kind of a extreme data, right? So they are kind of a atypical data and you know, the normal distribution. So that is actually represented by the low likelihood, low probability of these data, right? Um, so these are extreme. So if you think about like exam scores, right? So say uh, the usual exam score is 50, right? So that is the kind of center. Then if you just go out to, you know, far away from the mean, say you have like a 90, 100, and you have like a 10, 20, you know, you do not find these um, scores um, quite often compared to the scores close to the mean, right? So that's actually what it means uh, that, um, you know, that the middle scores are more likely to happen, whereas the extreme scores, so the, the scores in the tails are more extreme, and it is not likely that you see those data uh, frequently. So another feature of normal distribution, as I said uh, briefly just before, um, with all the central tendency measures, uh, the three central tendency measure we've learned, uh, mean, median, mode, have the same location, which is exactly this, uh, in the center of the normal distribution. And the normal distribution is perfectly symmetric around these three central tendency measure under a normal distribution. And another feature of normal distribution is that you can um, specify or characterize any normal distribution uh, if you know their location parameter and well that is a um, scale parameter the spread parameter which is sigma so here this is actually a lower case of sigma right to remember the big sigma here right and that is the capital uh, and then this is a lower case of the sigma right and we use this uh, um, lower case sigma to represent population standard deviation, right? So here, this is the, this arrow represents spread, the average spread in the normal distribution, which is typically represented by the sigma. And then the mu, this is another Greek letter, mu, right? Uh, representing the location parameter of normal distribution. So that is, the, you know, where the center is, right? So that is the mu. So that line is mu, and that is sigma, right? So as long as you know these two quantities, then you can specify the whole normal distribution curve uh, mathematically. So in fact, there is no such thing as like a the, or the normal distribution because 
you know, depending upon uh, this mu and sigma, right, there can be infinite number of different normal distribution, right? So here we have some, you know, a, a family of normal distributions showing, and the mu uh, is also called the location parameter, I said, right, because it dictates the horizontal location of the curve. Right. So, for example, if we look at this blue one, right, so, so this blue curve here is specified. So it has mu, the mu of zero, and the sigma square is 0.2, right? So sigma square is what? It is a standard deviation squared. So this quantity is actually a variance. So sometimes the normal distribution is specified with the mu and the variance or standard deviation. Sometimes it is square, sometimes it is not, but you know they just mean the same thing. And see, so the location of the blue curve is actually centered around zero, right? That's where the mean of this normal distribution is. But if we move or change the location parameter to the negative two, then that becomes the green curve, right? Green curve here. And then you can see that the center is actually moved by two to the left. So now the new location is negative two for the green curve. And if you look at the spread parameter, right, the sigma square is 0.5. So it actually increased from 0.2 to 0.5. So it has the green curve has more parameter, uh, more spread. And that is actually represented by larger. Uh, the kind of a fatter graph, right, compared to the blue one, right? So the location parameter um, determines the location, the horizontal location of the curve, and the spread parameter determines uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the width, width of the curve. Uh, and then we can also have... Um, the corresponding cumulative normal distributions curve and the cumulative curve um, has you know this kind of a, a characteristic shape uh, looking like a s right and you know these family of cumulative normal distributions here is actually the corresponding cumulative curve from this uh, family of curve right so and again uh, mu is the location parameter where it determines the location of cumulative normal distributions too. See, you know, the 50% the of the blue is actually symmetric around the center, which is zero. But if we move the center by two to the left, then the location parameter becomes negative two. And the slope of curve um, for the cumulative normal distribution also uh, is determined by the spread parameter. See, the blue curve is steeper compared to the green one, right? That's because um, the green one has more spread than the blue one. And another important feature of normal distribution is what's called the 689599.7 rule that relates the area or proportion under a normal distribution to the uh, standard deviation. So this rule applies to any normal distribution, so you might as well just remember this. So according to this rule, the area under the curve bound by plus minus one standard deviation. So here the mu again represents the mean of the distribution, right? The center of the distribution. And if you go out to one standard deviation, so sigma here is a standard deviation, right? So mu minus one is the score where um, this is the below uh, so one standard deviation below the mean and the other score that is located one, stand, one standard deviation above the mean. So 
when the normal distribution is bound by these two scores, right, then the area under the curve is 68%, right? Um, and you can find 95% of the area under the curve within plus minus two standard deviation. So that is pretty much like a most data you will find, I mean, the, the, the most of the proportions under the, um, the distributions, so say, so within plus minus two, so now you move another standard deviation far away from the center, and the area under the curve bound by these two scores. Now I just shade this. Okay, so that is 95%, okay? And if you go out further to three standard deviation, okay? So that's uh, three standard deviation below the mean and three standard deviation above the mean. Then this area, green area, will be 99.7%. So this is just a rule. So uh, you want to just remember it. Okay. So then what does this uh, area under the curve mean? Um, that is just the summed probability under the curve. Um, so before I told you that um, the normal distribution um, describes the uh, probability that you will see a certain value, right? So for example, the exact probability that you will find this data under this curve is here, right? So that is just a single probability for this data set. But when you say the area under the curve, so that you want to calculate the area under the curve from this data to the negative infinity, right? So that means is that this is a summed probability that you will find this data or more extreme because the data to the left here, right? So that includes all the more extreme data from this data set, right? So that's what that means. So the area under the curve is a summed probability from a certain data point, right? And in this case, because this is in more extreme side than this data set, so you say the area under the curve in this red represents um, the summed probability that you will find this data set, this data set, as big as this one, or more extreme. So that's what it means. And for the same token, this means the same thing. So here, if your data is located here, then the exact probability is just, just find this data under this normal distribution, you can just find here, right? So that is a single probability, but the area under the curve to this direction, right? represents all some of all the probabilities right all the other extreme values than this one so that is the area under the curve here right some the probability that you will find this data or more extreme so that's what it means so um if and what's the area under the curve in the middle? Again, that's the summed probability that you will find between these two data sets. So you add all the probabilities uh, between these two scores. But that's 
the meaning of area under the curve and this will become important later on when i um, try to explain the concept of p values or alpha uh, at the level of significance now that we have talked about the um uh the proportions or the area under the curve so let's just go over some problems and applying those um the rules right so here we have a normal distribution so this big n represents a normal distribution and this normal distribution um, has the location prime mean of 50 and then standard deviation of 10. so when you are given uh the uh, the specification of a normal distribution then um what is the proportion of the blue region here um you know given, given this uh, normal distribution so that is the question right so if you know the uh, the 68 95 99.7 rules then this question is easy to answer right so this middle proportion so it's just uh, bound by scores 40 and 60 here right we know that the mean is 50 right the center and then the standard deviation is 10 and these bounding scores are happen to be one standard deviation so that's um so 50 minus 10 right and then this 60 is one standard deviation above the mean which is 50 plus 10 right so now we know that these two bounding scores are the plus minus one standard deviations uh from the mean right and by the rule we know that the blue region is actually 68 percent right okay so here is another question for you then now we have different normal distribution right so now the mean is 75 and the standard deviation is 10. so in this case then what is the proportion of the shaded region with blue that is the question so now we know that the 75 is the mean and you have to you know find out you know what are the two bounding values and it looks like the 55 is one, seven, uh, 95 is another, but this is a lower limit, this is upper limit. So we know that the standard deviation of this, uh, of, of this distribution is a 10. So the 65 is actually one standard deviation below the mean, right? So that is 75 minus 10. And 55 is another one standard deviation from 65. So that is actually 75 minus 20, right? So that is a two standard deviation below the mean. And 95 by the same token, that is actually 75 plus 20, right? So this is a two standard deviation above the mean so what that means is that these two scores are the scores um that is the plus minus two uh standard deviation from the mean so by the 68 95 99.7 percent rule the proportion under this curve should be 95 percent Okay, now we have a kind of a flipped problem where you're given um, the middle proportion. So you are given the middle 68 percent, and then you're given the um, the specification of normal distribution here. And the question is to find these two bounding values, right? 
contain middle 68% when the normal distribution uh, has a mean of 40 and standard deviation of 5. So this is kind of an inverse problem compared to the previous one, right? So now we know that this middle is 68% and by the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, we know that you, we can find the middle 68% within plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, right? So we know that the center is 40, so that is the given mean, and the one standard deviation above the mean will be 40 plus five, that's 45, right? And the one standard deviation below the mean is 40 minus five, so that's 30, five right so the bounding values the lower limit and the upper limit is 35 and 45 for this question okay so within 35 and 45 we know that we can find middle 68 percent for this distribution right so here is another uh, similar question now the middle proportion uh, given to you is 95%, and you need to find out these two bounding scores um, containing the middle 95% when this distribution has mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 3. Again, the mean is here 20. Now, by the rule, we know that we can find middle 95% within plus minus two standard deviations this time, right? Because one standard deviation is three. So that's three, another three. So plus three, plus three. So this becomes 23. And then the two standard deviation, deviations from mean is 26. Right, so by the same token, you go two standard deviation below the mean of 20, so that's 17, and that becomes 14. Right, so the answer is 14 and 26 uh, for this distribution. Um, you know, the, the two values that you can find the 95% within. Okay, so here is another question, but I'll leave it up to you to solve this problem, um, and I'll put this question in this weekly quiz. Okay? So the question is, um, you need to find out the proportion of this distribution so this distribution has a mean of 10 and standard deviation of 3. And then what is the proportion of the distribution above 7? That is the question. So here, again, we have mean here, right? Oh, yeah, mean uh, 10. And then where is 7? 7 is actually one standard deviation below the mean, right? So that is 3. See the single standard deviation here is a three, and seven is actually one stand score that is one standard deviation below the mean. And the question is, what is the proportion above the seven? So that is the question, right? So um, have a think about it and see if you can come up with the right answer.